Baku, I think, has a wonderful scene of restaurants and of places where you can go to for having drinks, for meeting people, for dances, for, for entertainment. First time I was there, there were only a few restaurants you can go to. Obviously then after 95, 96, 97, places started mushrooming. If you go outside, there are a number of discos. It's a very good nightlife. Then we, we can see the karaoke's. I've been to karaoke's over there. I did, uh, sang a number of songs over there. You can have a very European pubs where a lot of old workers also go and expats downtown. The most interesting and I would say the most enjoyable ones are the local Assyri restaurants where you can have an open space with a lot of open tables. There are also Karaban Sarai restaurants. These are former stops of merchants along the Silk Road. In Azerbaijan, my impression was that besides tea and coffee, both very nice, there's nice wines, there's raki, there's vodka, of course, as a legacy from the Soviet Union. Of course, you have a very good local beer, but the major, is, major drink is vodka. You know, Azerbaijani men, I've seen them drink, 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 and nothing changes. They just, everything's normal. Of you know? course, they do it slowly, they eat, they talk, you know, it's got a rhythm to it. You can get the best lamb chop in Azerbaijan. I, I love tomatoes in general, and Aziri tomatoes, I think, are amongst the best. I love baluga fish. The first one would be dolma, and the second one would be dushpere, and third, pilaf. <coughs> then the best is kebabs. And of course, Azerbaijanis, they're not the only people that sit down at the table and eat. Everyone does it all over the world. But there's something going on at the Azeri table, some little spark of energy that uh, I've not experienced anywhere else. I have an ambition. I would love, love to one day open up a really fine Azerbaijani restaurant you know, here in uh, Cherry Hill, New Jersey. I think it'd be a great thing. Azerbaijani people I discovered on my first trip and every single trip afterwards, highly educated, highly cosmopolitan, uh, great sense of humor, and, um, and they have a, a nice balanced way of being in social setting. Uh, it, it, it's common for Azerbaijanis to know more about things about America than many Americans. I know Americans, they don't know the capitals of the states. But it's, Azerbaijani people, they rattle off the capital of our state. I think, why did you even bother to learn that? Azeri women can be extraordinarily beautiful. It's true. Most pretty ladies, if I've seen, I could see I've seen in Baku. I think you find a very high proportion of exceptionally attractive women in, in Azerbaijan, especially in Baku. And they also have a way of presenting themselves in the best possible way. There is no question about the beauty of Azeri woman, and that's well known. And everyone going to Azerbaijan comes with that impression. The first thing they talk about is the beauty. And you can see a lot of these women just moving back and forth in Fountain Square. And you see them all throughout the day, all throughout the week. And there are a lot of eating places in the Fountain Square. So if you just sit in there and grab a sandwich, you see all these women and you start to wonder why is this woman just going back and forth? So it's like a fashion show. How does the Azerbaijani, traditional Azerbaijani, solve the timeless question of how do you find a mate, right? In the Western world, you know, we go out on dates and we find somebody we like and we take them home to meet mom and dad and that's it. In the Eastern world, you know, you're 12 years old, that's your husband in the future, right? 15 year old kid, 12 year old, that's it, you're compatible. We like, the parents like each other, the kids are gonna get married and that's the end of that. So you've got this extreme Western thing, which is, you know, you go, it's like buying a car, you go take it for a test drive before you put the money down. And in the East, you know, it's like you are assigned to this person for the rest of your life. Don't even discuss it. So in Azerbaijan, they have to solve this problem in a unique way, which is 
uh, a nice boy sees a nice girl at some social function, and he doesn't go running up to her and saying, let's date, let's I want to take you out. He, he goes to his mother. And what does she do? She goes and finds out who is her mother, goes to the mother and says, listen, you know, we might become in-laws. We got to talk. The mother of the daughter goes to her daughter and says, daughter, I think I found a nice young man for you. And the important thing is the daughter can refuse. It's not forced. I like Azerbaijan music very much. And I still have many CDs. I li still listen to Azerbaijan music. The uh, Azerbaijani Mugam is one of the greatest forms of music that was ever invented by human beings. There was such a positive feeling in me. There was no skepticism like, oh, what is that strange instrument? It didn't feel strange at all. It just felt like some door was opening to a realm of knowledge and experience that I had been waiting for all my life. There's also a few, a few uh, really good jazz musicians in Azerbaijan. I, I remember that I once bought a CD from, I forgot the, the names, but there's a couple father and daughter. Mustafa Zadeh is I mean, the, the, the master of jazz. I, mean, I, I don't think that there, there's any sort of jazz player that came out of that part of the world as sort of deep, and as colorful as Mustafa Zadeh, it, it's a sort of a genre in itself, the way I see it. Particularly the ones he has where he mixes the Azeri motives with jazz motives. Unbelievable, I still listen to his uh, CDs. I have a huge recommendation for everyone who goes to Baku. The carpet museum is really something that is absolutely worthwhile seeing. Even for people who know nothing about carpets, even for people who don't like carpets, who hate carpets, this museum is something really impressive. You know, there are no carpets in the world like Azerbaijani carpets. They are astonishing. They are not merely beautiful. I mean, you, the Persian carpets are beautiful. Indian carpets are beautiful. But Azerbaijani carpets are mind-boggling. They're intriguing. Azeri carpets are really something of amazing aesthetic value and, and uh, I think it was one of the most interesting museums I saw in my life. If you talk to my daughter or talk to my son, they like, they, they say, they, if they want to go back, they want to go back to either to Azerbaijan or India. But I must say I feel, I feel not very far from home in Azerbaijan. <laughs>